Hey, what's happening guys? I'm getting ready to start a new project. I mentioned it to you last week. I'm thinking about building a uh, vacuum tube preamp kind of a guitar pedal-y thing. And for that, I'm going to use a uh, very common 12AX7 tube. So to make this pedal, I'm going to need a couple of different voltages. Now, in theory, the 12AX7 will run anywhere from 12 to about 300 volts. And I want to power this project off of 9 volts. So we're going to need a battery. We're also that, That's for the plate voltage, by the way. We're also going to need a heater voltage. Uh, 6 to 12 volts. So if we start out with 9 volts, I don't want to go all the way to 300. Although 300 would give it excellent headroom and make it, you know, just a beautifully clean amplifier. And I don't want to go all the way down to 12 volts or it's going to distort like crazy because the headroom is just crushed. So probably somewhere we'll start out around 100 volts. So how are we going to get from 9 volts to 100 volts? What we're going to do with a, a boost converter or, or what's also known as a step-up converter. So if you think about it kind of like this. We have our battery voltage. In this case, it's going to be 9 volts. And we take that and we put it through an inductor. And then we have a switch. It turns the inductor on and off. So you know how an inductor works. When this, when this switch is closed, uh, current is going to flow through the inductor in a clockwise direction. And the inductor is going to store energy in the form of a magnetic field. But when that switch is open, that magnetic field is going to collapse. So this is the other half of our boost converter. We're just going to put a diode in here, what's called a flyback diode basically, to keep that current and that voltage from going backwards. And we're going to have it flow through a capacitor. So again, when the switch is closed, the current will flow through here in this way, charging up the inductor. When the switch is open, that field, that magnetic field is going to collapse. And the switch is open, so it can't, the current can't flow through here. It's going to have to flow through the diode and through the capacitor, charging it up. And then over here, in parallel with the capacitor, we'll have our load. So, the next question becomes, what are we going to do for a switch? Because we probably need this thing running at... 200 kilohertz to 400 kilohertz? Well, yeah, could do it with a 555 timer. You know, I love 555 timers, but there's a catch. The voltage output is going to be dependent on the mark and space of the 555 timer, the P, basically the PWM output of the timer. If the load changes, the PWM is going to change. So we can't have that. So, oh, we didn't talk about this yet. This is going to be a MOSFET. I'm sorry. My, my mind is a, a blur. Our switch is a MOSFET. <laughs> Good Lord, Paul. Yeah, my mind's a blur. That's our switch. And then we have to drive that switch somehow. So the first way we could do it, like I said, is obviously with a 555, but it's not a good idea. So we're looking for something that might be called a MOSFET driver, and there's a thousand of them on the market, so how do we choose? Well, I'm not doing this for production. I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this for me. So I'm going to probably choose by what I have at home. And I have uh, some UC384 3842AN and 3843AN PWM controllers. Let's hop over to the computer and take a look. 
So here's the data sheets for the uh, 3842A and 3843A. You can see they are high performance fixed frequency current mode controllers. And they're good up to 500 kilohertz, which puts us right in the range we need. They have latching PWM. They're internally trimmed, blah, blah, blah. Let's check voltages. Maximum 30 volts, so that's well within what we need. We're only going to be hitting it with 9. Wow, output current of 1 amp. That's impressive. So let's see some circuit ideas. There's the internal block diagram. Oscillator. The oscillator is programmed by a resistor capacitor and RC circuit, no problem. And of course it will use an error amplifier, and we'll get into that later on more, uh, along with the current sense to control the PWM output. There's a list of what the different pins are under voltage lockout, reference, design considerations. Alright, external clock synchronization. No, no, no. Current sensing with a power MOSFET. That's pretty much what we want to do. Shall we zoom in? Okay, so this is the area that we're looking at here. So we have three pins coming out here, 11, 10, 8, oh, and 5, 11, 10, 8, and 5. So 11 is our high output state, we don't have 11, we're using an 8 pin chip, Paul, you had Where are we at? So 10.85. We don't have a 10 either. Good gravy, Paul. You should just go back to sleep. Enough to make me crazy. Doo -doo -doo. Here's our formulas. But yeah, I, I think this will work. That's, that's what I'm getting at. I'm just looking this over to make sure it's going to fit my needs. We can worry about the exact circuit later on. But yeah, I think this is going to fit my needs. So the next thing we need to know is what components do we need to use to get our boost converter from 9 volts to 50 volts? Or, I'm sorry, 100 volts. Okay, so I'm on the Adafruit site. This is learn.adafruit.com. And this is their boost converter calculator. Show. Our minimum expected voltage is 9 volts. Let's say our max is going to be 10. Our minimum out we want is going to be 100. Highest, let's say 120. This isn't going to draw much. It's just going to drive that MOSFET, so that's fine. And let's say we want to do uh, 400 kilohertz. Let's see what we get. So our duty cycle is going to be 90% on. Our minimum inductor size is going to be 56.2 microhenries. Our peak inductor current is going to be almost half an amp. Our minimum capacitor is going to be half a microfarad. And our shocky diode, 120 volts. Hmm. If we lower that. I think this will actually make it worse. But, huh? Yep. I mean, it changed the inductor value, but other than that, it's about the same. So, I'm going to change that. Well, so, we can go up to 500,000. That gives us a lower inductor. We see our, our amperage is still staying the same. 
and our duty cycles are staying the same. Those are pretty much fixed by the starting voltage and the ending voltage. So, so much money, Penny. We need a 45 micro Henry inductor. Hmm. I wonder if I have one. All right. I think that's about as far as I can go today. I'm going to have to search for some parts now. See, what we got we've got our our uh, MOSFET drivers. I've got MOSFETs. I'm going to have to find a suitable inductor. So we will do that in the next part. Now this is uh, coming out on Friday. I was I was planning to do the giveaway today, but you know, due to the death in the family, everything's pushed back. So the giveaway is going to come next week. Don't worry, we are still doing it. So. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to all of you. We're a family. We're a community. I love you all. Peace. I'm out.